Hey everyone, welcome to episode 13 of the Modern Kitchen Renovation Series. If you missed the previous episode, be sure to check it out. We applied materials for rendering, Enscape, and 3D views. Uh, so definitely check that out. In today's video, we're gonna continue applying materials. We're gonna finish with a floor. If you noticed in the last video, there was no kitchen floor. Um, and then we're gonna start placing some lights. Before we jump into Revit, I wanted to thank our sponsor of this video and this whole series, which is RevitFamily.biz. If you've been following along, you know that the cabinet families from Brenton at RevitFamily.biz are what I'm using within this kitchen and I use for pretty much all of my residential work. If you're interested in building a legit residential family library, um, then definitely check out RevitFamily.biz. And uh, Brenton was not only uh, nice enough to sponsor this entire series, but it was also nice enough to offer 20% off to you for watching along. So uh, head on over to RevitFamily.biz, use promo code 2022REVITKID to save. Check out this video and support Brenton for supporting me. So let's jump right into Revit and we'll continue along. As you can see here, we have the kitchen as it is, as it is, as it stands. Um, we've got the cabinets in, we've got all the materials on the cabinets. But the one thing we don't have as we flip around here in Enscape is we don't have a floor material and we don't have any lights and we don't have any uh, decor elements. Uh, and so that's kind of what we're gonna fill in throughout these, the rest of these uh, videos here. So I'm gonna go over to my floor plan. I'm gonna create a new floor. I'm duplicating the existing and calling it my uh, new concrete or kitchen tile floor. Uh, what you'll notice here as I go through this process is I'm making this as just a, a quarter inch, I think, or three quarter inch tile floor. Um, because it's existing conditions, I'm gonna lay it on top of the existing floor structure. Uh, one thing you will also notice is that I'm going to drop down the existing floor to make room for it. Here I'm just adding um, some the material, I'm calling it kitchen tile floor. I'm gonna give it a uh, 12 by 12 simple uh, square pattern here or one foot by one foot and then i'm going to go over to appearance and uh, you can see i'm using a a default tile material you're going to see we're going to tweak that in a little while but this is just a default um, like gray concreteish, uh, i guess porcelain looking or slate i should say looking tile now i'm just going around I'm using the pick wall tool so that if the walls move the floor moves with it and then i'm going to use tr on my keyboard which is trim and i'm just going to trim around um, to clean up all of these edges of our lovely magenta lines. Uh, just draw another line to close in the stairs here. Again, TR on my keyboard is the quick keyboard shortcut for trim. And I'm just gonna trim around all those edges and click finish. And now you see I got a warning that highlight elements overlap. And so as I mentioned before, uh, this was an existing floor. And um, so what I'm doing here is I need to make sure that I drop the existing floor, and remove the top layer, which was um, I think wood. I did not plan ahead for demoing the floor um, as far as the existing is concerned. And so um, I probably should have done that a little separately, but here I'm just removing that top layer, um, which was an oak floor, I think, or something. And I'm just gonna drop it down by negative three quarters of an inch. You'll notice some of the chairs and furniture, um, some of the objects were actually hosted to the floor. Um, so what I have to do here is just go around and, and re-host some of those objects to the new floor, which is my um, tile floor. And so you can see here I'm going around and I'm just selecting a few of these objects and I'm just gonna say, um, pick new host and I'm gonna select the new floor. So they pop up um, and they're not three quarters of an inch in the ground. So just selecting the chairs and saying, pick new host. Um, I think some of the casework did it um, for some some reason, uh, must have been the way I placed them. Um, and so I just, again, select those casework and say pick new host and there we go. Now everything's, uh, everything's good, everything's sitting on top of the tile floor. Now we can flip into Enscape and you can see already, um, just having some sort of material on the floor is, is helping quite a bit. Um, and you can see here, it's, it's, I'm going for sort of a large porcelain tile slash almost like concrete look to it. And so I think what you'll see is I'm gonna modify the, the size of it. Um, the other thing I did here is I decided to check out the Enscape material editor as a potential for modifying this. And the reason I did that is um, it allowed me to add a displacement map and a few other reflection planes. Um, so you see, I'm just changing the, the size of it from 
Apparently this is in meters now uh, in the Enscape tool. Um, and you can see here, there's a height map, there's reflections. So you have a, and when you're using the Enscape material editor, you have a lot more options um, as far as the uh, type of, of, of images you can use, um, like a normal map, a bump map, a displacement map, all of that good stuff. So I just cranked up the size of it a little bit and uh, and I changed, I increased the displacement and as well as the reflections. And now what you'll see is a, a, a much better looking floor. So I like the size of this. And now if you look in the reflection here, this is where it really shows um, when I when I get out of the wall and I <laughs> and I and I go to the floor area, you can see especially where the sun's coming in, you start to see the reflections and the ripple of the of the, the concrete looking tile. Um, and it starts to kind of uh, make it pop and look a little more realistic. And so if you look on the floor over here to the left, you could really start to see how those those grooves and those those uh, the texture of the material really come through. So now just continuing with adding a few more materials, I'm just taking this um, this wood table um, and I'm applying, this is actually an existing wood table they had, a beautiful wood table they have. And so I'm trying to make it look a little bit more like um, the, the wood color that the uh, existing table is. So just applying a default. And remember, you want to apply the materials that do not have that um, big uh, explanation point next to them because um, those are the uh, PBR materials, the better looking materials in Enscape or Revit. And, uh, and so I'm applying that here. I'm going to copy the name of it. Um, this is something that uh, for material uh, for, for material applications, it's something that's really good to, to get used to is if you copy name from, from one other area, you can paste it in the other one instead of always opening the material dialog. So I do that quite a bit where I'll, I'll copy the name and I'll, uh, I'll paste it around around the, the model. Um, here I'm just adding a little more reflection to this this neat little green chair uh, that's in the in the island. And that should really finish up most of the material stuff. So we'll jump into Enscape to take another look to see how it looks. You can see the table and the chairs are all the same material now. Got a little more reflection on that green chair. Um, and it's really starting to come together. Obviously, the one thing you can see here that we're really missing is lighting. And lighting is really going to start tying this, this, this project together. So now I'm going to go over to my reflected ceiling plan. I'm just setting my underlay to show my first floor. Um, so even though I'm looking up at the ceiling level, um, I can see the first floor below, which is allowing me to see my my island. And then I'm going to use this um, recessed can light, I guess you could call it. Um, this is a really nice family that I have. Um, I modified from from a manufacturer, I don't remember. Um, but uh, but the nice thing about it is it has the the material of the of the middle of the can so so where light source is coming from is is a light on material and so if you if you follow along with my with my content you've seen that um that's a really good way to make it look like lights are on as opposed to the default revit lights where there might not be that light on material and you'll see exactly what i'm talking about when i go into endscape and in the next episode i'm actually going to build a light fixture from scratch and so you'll know all about that light on material so here I'm just placing them. Remember, this is schematic design, so I'm really just roughing this out really quickly. Um, and then I just added a, a whole bunch of dimensions using DI on my keyboard um, and then equalize them, a quick way to sort of lay something out and, and spread them out evenly. And then I'm just going to copy them along. What you'll see is I start running into a couple issues um, because I forgot that I have that curved, <laughs> that stupid curved ceiling there. Um, so I needed to go by uh, place by face. Um, you'll notice these are face based uh, lights. These are not ceiling based lights. Um, pretty important for, for lots of the different uses that, that I use them for. Um, as we as we go through this, you'll see I end, up, I end up using a smaller version of these under the cabinets as well. So I'm just going to copy along and now we've got our recessed can lights. These already have uh, the light on. You can see, notice how you're actually seeing where the light source is coming from, which is which is phenomenal. Um, they're, they're, plate, they're, they're actually producing light down on the ground, you, if you remember how, how dark the space was before. Now what I'm doing is I'm actually just going to look through and I'm going to um, look for a a light fixture for over the island, uh, three pendant lights. And I, I wanted to keep this in here because it's important that um, you see why I actually ended up building this from scratch. So I just downloaded this file from BIM object after lots and lots of searching uh, that was sped up quite a bit. <laughs> um, and I was trying to look for the perfect light. Um, and, and then this, I found this orb light. But then I downloaded it and realized the whole thing was a CAD import from some some program, uh, maybe Maya, maybe Max, maybe CAD. I don't really know. Um, but there was really not much I could do with it from there. And so that's really important um, because when it comes to lighting, I know one of the issues that people run into all the time is finding the right lights. And so this is a perfect example of one where I sat there and said, well, this is a circle. It's just a sphere. 
uh, with a cable and another, you know, sort of holster there. Um, so it's really not that big of a deal. Um, so I decided to actually model this pendant light, uh, this, this sphere's pendant light from scratch, make it fully parametric in case I want to use it again, and uh, and then place it in here for, for rendering and so on and so forth. And of course, I recorded that, and that is going to be our next episode. I'm going to build that thing from scratch. And you're going to see how it may seem like I probably spent 10 to 15 minutes looking for the stupid light that you see that you saw on screen. Um, and then you'll see it took maybe 10 or 15 minutes for me to build this light from scratch, fully parametric that I can use all over the place. And, and so that's what we're going to do in the next episode. So stick around. I hope you enjoyed this just to see how this stuff is progressing. And in the next episode, it's all going to be about building this custom light family from start to finish. If you're enjoying this series, uh, definitely subscribe to the channel. You'll see the next pendant video um, soon and uh, and comment below. Um, and also don't forget to support RevitFamily.biz uh, for supporting me. Thanks, guys, and talk soon.